the 23rd regular meeting of the 2020-21 Common Council to order. Alderperson Phillip. Alderperson Sorensen. Here. Alderperson Savaglio. Present. Alderperson Felicki Paneski. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. There are nine present. Thank you very much. Alderperson Phillips is excused. Uh, then please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Then we'll move on to approval of the minutes from our 22nd uh, regular council meeting held on February 15th. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Let's please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is confirmation of uh, mayoral appointment. The following appointment for your consideration. John Schulke to be considered for appointment to the Senior Activity Center Commission. Fill a vacancy with the term expiring on April 17, 2023. Thank you very much. Alderperson Sorensen. I move to confirm the appointment. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for confirmation? But I'll vote aye. What? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Aurora. When Advocate Aurora uh, approached the city about the concept of building a new hospital, uh, we signed a, a memorandum of understanding with them, and uh, this update will give us an idea where we are with uh, the different uh, uh, benchmarks in that. Dave, are you ready? Yeah. Um, thank you, Mayor, and I appreciate the opportunity to just get it, give you an update and answer any questions that you have. So. I'm Dave Gravener. I'm the president of Aurora Sheboygan Memorial Medical Center. And um, so I think that, um, yeah, is there someone that could advance the slides? And you see the, or is, is there something I could do to it's advance showing, that? It's there showing, David. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think if you go back to slide two, um, that um, just gives you a, 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 a sense of reference. I think everybody's all aware of uh, uh, the site uh, just north of Acuity and south of UW um, Sheboygan. Um, if you can go to the next slide, then on slide three. Um, so our services in the new hospital were will will be opening up as a 117 bed hospital. We have uh, licenses broader than that, but it'll be the first opportunity that we've had where we have clinic and hospital on the same campus. So any of the programs that require uh, physicians availability 
um, for hospitalization. orthopedics in our women's and NICU uh, services. We're also committed to continue to function as a safety net for the city and the county around behavioral health services. So uh, besides our inpatient um, program, we also just hired a new adolescent psychiatrist um, and we've reopened our adolescent program. So that's an important part of our service on the campus. And then our emergency room, um, our medical, surgical, our behavioral, then we see quite a bit of, um, of pediatric uh, cases in, in the uh, emergency room. And then the clinics that will be located on the medical uh, campus are gonna be orthopedics, our sports health, OB, cardiology, general surgery, and pulmonology. So, uh, and that, that really affords us to um, have some breathing room in the existing Sheboygan Clinic and we're we're doing planning right now on kind of our backfill to, to be able to expand access. Uh, part of our plan is uh, additional 10 physicians um, throughout the market to just improve our access. So you go to the next slide, you just get a sense of uh, so slide four um, is uh, the um, Oh, I'm, I have control here, so that's that's great. Thank you. Um, just the picture, uh, so you kind of see the aesthetics. Uh, this is standing from the corner of uh, um, uh, Taylor Drive uh, in Union there. Um, uh, this is just a sense of the entry. So want it to be a welcoming place. Uh, clinics will be off to the left, and then the main hospital entrance will be all together. And then um, our healing garden will really be a center area, uh, way to incorporate kind of the, the um, uh, healing you know, part of nature into the campus. So everything's centered around that, our inpatient tower, our, our um, what we're calling our DNT, and then our medical office building. So uh, slide seven, just kind of going through the time frame, and many of you were we're part of this process and time frame. It was 2013 is when we had initial board approval. Um, we got approval in 2016 for the replacement of the facility and um, started construction in 2019. Uh, uh, we're planning to have day um, and move all of our patients and so there'll be a lot of logistics but end of the year is when we'll get the hospital That's and then our uh, we'll we'll open with our medical office building in April uh, maybe the end of uh, March and then in the summer of 22 is when we'll be in the hospital so 18 months or so from now. Uh, this just gives you the latest uh, kind of view. We're, we're just enclosed now. Um, I think all of the, or most of the, um, and um, starting to take shape. Uh, and I think, you know, a lot of the work that um, in Union Avenue and, and that work has been complete. So I think um, just to kind of, you know, reiterate our commitment around you know, um, supporting the local community and what we're doing. We we had metrics uh, associated with making sure we have diverse and women-owned uh, businesses part of our construction process. So 20% of our uh, construction is um, uh, use of our local products. We have a lot of our headquarters here uh, and so we wanted to make sure we're incorporating that in the facility as well. Our, um, our local contractors, you know, making sure we're using materials kind of locally. And then we have annually over $2 million worth of contracts for supplies and services uh, that will continue and, and grow in the new facility. And then I think that as uh, the mayor kind of,
enhancements that we've provided the Taylor and Union is part of that as well as um, the, there'll be support um, as part of the part of that arrangement so that'll take place when we're when we're um, in the in the facility yeah, I think we've had guidance from the um, from Todd and, and Mayor around, you know, how do we make sure we're involving the neighbors along the way? Um, so um, we are going to be holding a neighborhood community forum. A little hard to do with COVID, uh, but in April, we'll have several Zoom meetings with the neighbors. We'll be sending postcards out to the residents near the um, new facility to give them an update answer any questions that they have around lighting, and, um, you know, traffic and those kind of items, um, similar to if any of you were involved in the Blue Harbor event that we had, um, it'll be similar to that, you know, just using Zoom. And so uh, we'll make sure you have that um, on your calendar. We're hoping to finalize that. Uh, Alder person Mitchell and, and Decker with um, kind of your, your um, your neighborhoods in, included in that. Um, we will do a major community forum. I think we want to make sure we're providing information and any questions there. I think we're hopeful with COVID that that could be at the end of the year. We want to do that in person. So we have some uh, way in which we're um, providing inf you know, information. And then um, on an annual basis, we have a commitment with the city to make sure we have neighborhood um, five neighborhoods around the um, or a Sheboygan Memorial. And so um, we website up where we are getting, you know, kind of uh, sporadic emails uh, with questions. So we're making sure we're answering that, but our commitment is a annual uh, forum. we go. Um, I think that um, before I kind of get into the redevelopment agreement, I think what's changed in the facility um, from um, what our original So we were able to make some design changes to the facility. We're going to, we've doubled the number of negative pressure rooms. So uh, that'll really help us prepare well in the future. If we had another pandemic, we've also added some <laughs> med surge beds uh, in the design. So I think helps us with surge planning in the future and some of the things that we've learned through COVID. We've um, really have a, a, a strong backbone um, of our computer systems. Uh, that really will allow us to have telehealth. Find them, send them somewhere else where we can get a neurologist on um, for, you know, telestroke or um, subspecialist um, that instead of driving here, that's able to get on uh, in picture um, on the uh, telehealth. So I think that's really greatly expanded. We. We have further engagement kind of technology with our patients. So people will be able to Skype with their relative in Boston um, when they're getting their room. Kind of our distribution of supplies um, and how we're managing that to kind of support the nursing staff. So. I think some good changes as a result of the learning with COVID and, you know, hopefully it will kind of position us for the next uh, next hundred years um, with with some of those changes. Just, uh, you know, I think, um, I think you've probably all seen this, but I think just to kind of reiterate the, um, <coughs> our commitment around the redevelopment um, agreement. This is our agreement between the city and Aurora, written agreement associated with how we will transition um, that property. So, um, and Bert's been part out, um, and, and Todd 
uh, talking about that within the neighbors. So we've employed a consulting <coughs> group that kind of helped us um, with those discussions. Um, Graf, um, we have committed to, in essence, a we're anticipating is, um, you know, that um, you know, we want to kind of make sure that we're, um, you know, we're work with the city and the neighborhood um, over these next, you know, several years uh, to redevelop, in essence, work with a developer that would redevelop the property based on um, that, you know, our work with the city, um, you know, rights in essence to make sure that that sale happens um, to appropriate uh, developer. And then, um, and then I think we're, um, you know, I think, um, you know, can transition Um, and then just the last slide, I think we've, you know, really had a lot of great community support around our foundation. We have a $5 million campaign. We're nearly complete with that. And what this does is it really enhances the services that we're delivering. So we've actually expanded the number of NICU beds. Um, in our um, high school uh, and, um, you know, um, co uh, sport coaches to injury prevention. We will be expanding our uh, technology availability, so more mobile technology available that, you know, to help us position ourselves in the, forward, in the future. And then, you know, we'd really like to make sure that we have Uh, for that neighborhood so that, um, you know, we really are um, part of the uh, plan for, um, you know, how that ties with Bookworm Gardens. And so we're, you know, those are the things that our, our um, commitment is uh, as well around the um, additional campaign. I think there's a few other things. Um, Put in my resignation for um, retirement. I'm I'm retiring from uh, uh, from the, my position here uh, this summer, so I'm done July one. Um, it was really driven off of our family and plans. It's been a mixed uh, feeling for me. I've really you know been in this community almost 11 years, and um, you know has been a you know really. transition I think we've done that and we were supposed to be in that building by now and I think that that timing I think it will you know we'll make sure we have a good transition plan we've, we've posted the position and we'll be hiring someone that you know can make sure they function within the community so you know I'm committed to that kind of that transition plan making sure that goes um, goes smoothly um, I think we have also been very focused on vaccine and we know that's a a key area and you know I think we've you know been really fortunate with our partnership with the county and um, Purvey and St. Nick's and you know wanted to just continue to you know support getting our vaccines um, so teachers this week will be starting to schedule that um, in indoor vaccine clinic on the south side there and then um, so that's my that's my update Thank you very much, David. Any questions for him? David, I have one. Uh, when you talked about the uh, money that would be paid uh, to, for the police services, uh, I believe there was also a 15% uh, add-on that would uh, go to the village. Yes. 
Yep. Thank you much. David, I want to thank you for all the work you've done through this process. So it's been great to work with you uh, through all the different things that we have. Yeah, it's been a great partner for the city. And, uh, and thank you much and all the best in your retirement. Well, thank you. I yeah, appreciate your partnership um, here. So, Well, thanks for your time tonight. Yep. Bye-bye now. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. Um, Maywood is celebrating Sugar Maple Month uh, from March 2nd through the 31st. The Sugar Maple season will look a little different at Maywood this spring. While they won't be hosting Flapjack Day events and a breakfast, they will have a month filled with Sugar Maple self-guided hikes. They will be available uh, the entire month during the daylight hours. So hopefully you can still enjoy some of their maple syrup. Uh, the spring election will be held on April 6th and several candidate forums have been scheduled. All the forums will, uh, are, 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 well, they are going to be on March 5th, 11th, and 18th, and they will all be held here in the council chambers of City Hall so that it can be streamed live on community station WSCS, and a recorded video will also be available on the WSCS Sheboygan Facebook site. Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce is the first forum, which will feature an informative Q&A session between the candidates for mayor on Friday, March 5th at 11.30. Uh, Sheboygan Branch of American Association of University Women will sponsor a virtual candidate forum for the April election for the Sheboygan Area School District Board. And... Uh, the mayoral contest, as well as Aldermanic District Number Two, the forum for the Sheboygan Area School District with six candidates running for three positions on the school board will be on March. And the forum for the mayoral candidates will air at 6 p.m. on Monday, Thursday, March 18th. And a forum for the Aldermanic District Two candidates will immediately follow the mayoral forum. The spring election uh, in-person absentee voting will be available at the clerk's office beginning on March 23rd through April 2nd. Next, I'd like to do an update on our COVID situation. Uh, first of all, let's review the numbers for Monday, March 1st. Uh, we have uh, 12,914 total positive cases. That's up 142 from last week. We have uh, 150 active cases. That's up 119 from last week. And we have 12,636 recovered cases. And our hospital occupancy went from three up to six. Went up by two more. And then our negative test total is up uh, 874 this last week. The curtain burden rate for per 100,000 people is 250. The rate, if it goes down below 100, then we will transition from the high activity level to the medium level. Currently, there are 16 registered vaccinations locations in Sheboygan County. They have all begun. The state has increased their vaccination uh, sites operating. In February, Sheboygan County averaged 4,058 doses per week. This is a 30% increase in January. Today, the state expanded the eligible. transit staff, congregate housing residents and, and, and their staff, and non-frontline medical staff. Family and your community healthy and safe. By getting vaccinated, you can help end the damage to the economy by preventing more illnesses and deaths in America and in Sheboygan County, and eliminate and eradicate COVID-19. 
The vaccines will help bring this pandemic to an end. At a 95% efficiency, the vaccine is extraordinarily effective at protecting you from the virus. Imagine the day that you can stop wearing a mask or, and you can again gather indoors at your favorite restaurant with friends and family for a celebratory meal. That day is coming, but only if we do what needs to be done today to keep ourselves and our families and our communities uh, safe and healthy. The pandemic has also taken a financial toll on many of our residents and businesses in Sheboygan, but there is help available. Today, Governor Evers announced the new Wisconsin Emergency Rental $322 million in funding to help as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Eligible applicants include Wisconsin residents who demonstrate a risk of experiencing housing instability and have seen their income reduced by the COVID income at or below 80% of the county median income. Once approved, the eligible individuals may receive up to 12 months of assistance. Rental assistance and utility assistance payments are made directly to the landlord or the utility provider on behalf of that tenant. And we also have a mortgage assistance program. The City of Sheboygan and Lakeshore Community Action Program are, have announced a mortgage assistance program for the City of Sheboygan homeowners who have been affected by COVID-19. Under the Coronavirus Relief Act, passed by the Congress on March 27th of 2020. The City of Sheboygan received uh, allocation from, the, from HUD and the Community Block Grant Program. The City has partnered with Lakeshore CAP to develop a new mortgage assistance program with these funds for low and moderate income households affected by the loss. Uh, and And we also are still accepting uh, businesses that have uh, need, need emergency assistance. We want to see these businesses survive this COVID pandemic. And we're released to help the, the, guide the disbursement of the CARES Act funding that was received by the city. And even if the business has uh, received other funding during the pandemic, they still may be eligible if the business has five or fewer full-time employees and experienced the hardship due to COVID pandemic. The grants are generally between $2,000 and $15,000. Individuals and directly to the city of Sheboygan for revenue replacement, for additional, re additional uh, residential and business assistance, and infrastructure improvements so that the city will continue without interruption. Last week, the House of Representatives passed the administration's COVID relief legislation and sent it on to the Senate for further action. And I will continue to support the American Rescue Plan to see that Sheboygan receives, receives their fair share to deal with the budget challenges that are faced by this city. Our residents and the businesses need to survive this pandemic and continue to thrive. And we'll move back to our uh, uh, consent agenda. The consent agenda will include items 2.3 through 2.16. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items in the consent agenda? Thank you. Th seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. reports of officers items 3.1 through 3.5 will lay over till our next meeting and item 3.6 is RO number 157 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission to whom was referred resolution 166 of 
of dash 2021 by Alder Person Boren pursuant to an extraterritorial plat approval jurisdiction of the city of Sheboygan. The preliminary plat being approved by the city planning commission on December 15th of 2020 and wishes to report that this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the city planning commission on February 23rd of 2021 and after due consideration uh, recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the resolution. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Then I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Eight eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 3.7 is RO number 158 of 2021 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred resolution number 167 of 2021 by all their persons born. And RO number 138 of 2021 by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Robert Werner of Stonebrook Crossing LLC, submitting the final plan. place cul-de-sac and wishes to report that this matter was discussed at a regular meeting of the City Planning Commission on February 23rd of 2021 and after due consideration recommends filing the RO and adopting the resolution with the following conditions. Number one, the applicant shall obtain approval from appropriate agencies including but not limited to the city, county, the state of Wisconsin, the and shall submit the final plats uh, that meet the City of Sheboygan Subdivision Ordinance. Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RO and adopt the resolution with conditions. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I mentioned this at a couple of the planning meetings. Uh, this uh, Werner Subdivision, uh, Stonebrook, is going to be an excellent addition to my District 10 on the far south side. Uh, when these houses are all built, uh, I'm estimating that each one of these properties is probably going to bring in between $5,000 up to about $7,500 in property tax uh, per property, which is well, which we desperately can uh, use as we go forward with uh, different projects in the city. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Mayor, old person Feldy. I'd just like to again thank um, Werner for um, doing the redevelopment on, on that subdivision um, to keep that um, small park in the area and even enhancing it. See none with a Nine eyes. Motion passes. The remaining items, items 3.8 through 3.11, will be point one through 4.10 will again be uh, referred to various committees. Moving on to reports of committees. Item 5.1 is RC number 274 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 168 of 2021 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, providing for the sale of approximately $3,660,000 in taxable general obligation refunding bonds series 2021B. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, I uh, move to... Uh, 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 Provide for the sale of approximately 3.660 million 
opposes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, when we talked about this uh, last a week ago tonight at the Finance Committee meeting, uh, I voted no on this. However, we had another presentation by Administrator Wolf tonight at a special finance meeting with some changes in the program. And after that presentation, I feel much more comfortable with this. And tonight I will be voting yes. Thank you very much for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 275 of 2021 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 175 of 2020 by Alderpersons Donahue and Bourne, approving the investment policy for the City of Sheboygan recommends adopting the resolution. Alderperson Donahue. Second. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Nine nice. Motion passes. And going on to other matters, I call on City Attorney Charles Adams. Uh, there's just one, 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2021, December 31, 2021, and June 30, 2022. Thank you. That will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Next is adjournment, uh, Alderperson Sorensen. I move. signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your time tonight.